from the cross to the throne under the caption the seven last words of Jesus on the cross I'm glad that Jesus came I'm glad that he died and I'm also glad that he rose again he is not in the grave Sa ma, he is risen come on celebrate with somebody and shout he is risen shout it louder the cruise of christianity is not the birth of christ as it were it's not even his suffering not even his crucifixion ultimately all these things would have been useless without his resurrection i'm glad he rose and i'm happy he's alive forever he was he that was dead and is alive forever. And I prophesy you will experience the reality of resurrection today. In the mighty name of Jesus. There are several last words that Jesus spoke on the cross. Those words are the cruise upon which Christianity is standing. Those are the words that makes Christianity fireful and powerful. Number one words is in the book of Luke chapter 23 verse 34. Where he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He preached forgiveness. And Jesus said, Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his garment and cast off. So the first words that Jesus spoke on the cross was the power of forgiveness. Any child of God that is not walking in forgiveness is not a child of God. You are a child of the devil. One of the mark of our Christian faith is forgiveness. The elephant is the biggest mammal on earth. But because of unforgiveness, the elephant does not have a house. The elephant does not have a base. Till death, the elephant is a wanderer. One of the things that makes the elephant a wanderer without a home is, is unforgiveness. Elephant does not forgive and it does not forget. When elephant vex, elephant can destroy the elephant is the massive mama he does not forgive the ant is the smallest of all animals yet he has underground house because he forgives listen to me child of god anybody that operates in unforgiveness is like one taking poison and expect another person to die how can you take a poison and expect someone else to die sir unforgiveness gives you high blood pressure unforgiveness exposes you to the attack of the devil unforgiveness denies divinity the access and interventions in your life there are some sicknesses that cannot be healed or cured unless you forgive many sicknesses how they are doors and open their ways into our life because of unforgiveness when there's unforgiveness in marriages the husband will be falling sick the wife will be falling sick high blood pressure all kinds of attack will be happening in the home the enemy has opened a loopholes from which is launching his attack i came to announce to you one of the seven words of jesus is that father forgive them for they know not what they are doing there are some afflictions there are some attack that can only cease in your life when you live in forgiveness unforgiveness sir is a cage that keeps you in stagnation unforgiveness is a cage that keeps you in, in in stagnation actually unforgiveness hinders prayer jesus said when you come with your offerings and you saw that you have an ought against your brother leave the offering on the altar go back and make peace with your brother then come back and offer the offering I don't know why Jesus says you keep the offering and go back. I expect him to say carry the offering and go back. But God will still receive the offering. Only that you will not be blessed. So there are too many givers that are not blessed. Too many titans that are not blessed. Too many holy people that are not seeing the blessings of God. The reason is simple. They are operating in unforgiveness. So the first statement of Jesus is the Father forgive them for they know not what they do number two last words of jesus on the cross 
which is a cruise of Christianity, is in the book of Luke chapter 23 and verse 43. Truly I say unto you, today you will spend eternity with me in paradise. Today you will spend eternity with me in paradise. Talking about the two thieves which were uh, uh, caught and hanged uh, alongside with Jesus. One on his left hand and one on his right hand. The one on his left hand said, if you be the son of God, why not set yourself free and also set us free? The other one said, keep your mouth shut. We deserve what we are going through. We are paying for our sin. But this man, what sin did he commit? He turned to Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me in your father's kingdom. And Jesus said, today, 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 you will spend eternity with me in paradise. That is what I call the gift of salvation. The gift of salvation. Jesus came for the salvation of man. Salvation is not a change of behavior, sir. Salvation is not a change of character. If you think salvation is a change of character, you have underestimated the power of salvation salvation sir is not a change of behavior is somebody hearing what i'm saying here salvation is not a change of attitude salvation is a change of nature it's a change of nature we became a new creature at salvation second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 if any man be in christ it's a new creature all things have passed away all things have become new so the new creature is not a moralist the new creature child of god is a reborn man a reborn man he's not a moralist don't steal i don't steal i don't smoke i don't drink that is a moralist that is not a new creature the new creature is a reborn person god does not fix your old life when you become born again sir it is the old life dies and a new life emerges some people think that and when they become born again god repairs their old life no all things are passed away and behold all things have become new it was not just your sin that was forgiven at, at salvation but your nature changed your nature did what change at salvation so what is salvation salvation is god a man is god bringing himself into man that is god's greatest act of creation giving us salvation it is god creating god in the spirit of man it is god creating god in the spirit of man is somebody hearing me it is god wrapping himself in human flesh what is salvation god wrapping himself in your human flesh it is god burning himself inside you the reborn spirit that is salvation salvation is not to be born of the flesh it is a product of the spirit at salvation you were spiritized salvation is being a product of the same content as jesus is being a product of the same content at salvation what made jesus jesus was given to us first peter 1 23 being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed and they, 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 they uh, amplify said be born again not of the human sperm but of divine spermatozoa am i talking to somebody here you are the sperm of god at salvation god discharges sperm and you are the product of it so it, you are, listen salvation makes a god out of you Salvation is not a moralist. Salvation is a God walking on the earth. I say you are gods. And you are the son of the most high. Mm. Mm. Salvation is not a continuation of Adam. Sorry sir, it's not. Salvation is being originated from Jesus. Salvation makes you a partaker of his divine nature that means his divine nature is a nature of immortality his divine nature is a nature of incorruption 
His divine nature is a nature of glory and not shame. Salvation created in you righteousness. There are four principal forces that governs our salvation. The moment you, are, you receive that salvation, Father, when he prayed and he said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Aye. Salvation is tant to place. And guess what? There are four forces that governs your salvation. Without it, your salvation is a waste. Number one, the force of faith. The force of faith is the creative force. It's the dominating force. It helps you to create what has not existed. You can create a new organ, new kidney. You can create a new job. It makes you a co-creator with God. The force of faith. It causes things to happen. Sir, the loss of faith is the loss of control. Number two force is the force of righteousness. It is the determining factor of our being. Righteousness is our nature that we may be made the righteousness of God. It is the substance from which the new creature derives its nature. Righteousness is the substance from which the new creature derives its nature. Righteousness. Number three force is the force of love. The force of love. It is the inward strength of the believer. It is the power that enables us to deal with people as Christ would have dealt with them. It is that power within us that makes us to love the unlovable and pray for them that persecute us. The love of God. The love of God. Without the force of this love, you don't have the nature of God. What gives you the nature of God is the love of God. You are governed by it. Then number four, of course, is the force of wisdom. It is the light of God upon the spirit of man. The force of wisdom is the light of God upon the spirit of man to dispel darkness. We shine by wisdom. So it is the wisdom of God that makes our Christianity experience shining. The power of knowledge is made manifested in the wisdom of God. These are the four forces that govern our salvation. The force of faith, the force of righteousness, the force of love, the force of what? Wisdom. Number three, words that Jesus spoke on the way to the cross. John chapter 19 verse 26 to 27. Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. He's talking about relationship. John chapter 19 and verse 26 to 27. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. The next verse, Son, behold thy mother. Hmm. These are powerful words. It has to do with relationship. Relationship. By the relationship we have with God, it helps us to go extra mind with God. In the book of Luke, the Luke account of when Jesus rose from the dead. Bible said there are three types of Christians that have three kinds of relationships from that scripture. The Bible said the moment they told them that Jesus Christ is risen, Peter and the disciples started running to the cross, to the grave. The Bible said when they ran, they came. The Bible said they saw a napkin, Peter saw a napkin and he carried a napkin to him, that is a napkin touch, that was enough all he knew about the resurrection of Jesus is a napkin there are people that only see the power of God through symbols if you don't give them something, they don't believe God is moving if you tell them, go it is well, they won't believe you. give them anointing oil that is the napkin dimension of relationship. They only relate with God on napkin. Then the Bible said the other disciple whom he loved went inside. And when he entered, Peter came, stood at the door, saw the napkin return. But John went inside. The Bible said that's the second stage of relationship. He saw an angel. 
there are people who are satisfied at seeing angels having spiritual goose pimples in the church to them that is a relationship with god as long as i worship i lie down i i squeeze face like an early morning food that has reached that's grown sour to them that is relationship as long as they can speak some tongues under heavy worship lowry cowry siri that's okay <laughs> to them that is a level of relationship john saw it and the angel said to him why do you seek the living among the dead he is not here he is risen he has gone ahead of you to galilee to the place where he told you of john turned and ran but there is this set that set of christians i want to be like that one the bible say mary magdalene when she saw the angel the angel said he is risen he has gone she said no where did you keep my lord show me his body i just don't want to go and say he's risen give me an evidence the bible says she insisted she continued to cry jesus was on his way to heaven when he heard the cry of mary he turned back and appeared to her he said mary what do you want it, she was thinking it was the gardener and he said to her who are you looking for he said jesus he said why are you looking for the living am the, among the dead he is not here she said show me where did you keep him and he looked at her and shouted mary and her eyes open Calibos. somebody's getting to that realm of relationship where your eyes will open your spiritual eyes will open and her eyes open and she shouted rabboni master and he said don't touch me i've not ascended your god my god your father my father i'm carrying the blood of internal redemption it has not yet been accepted in heaven i was on my way to heaven but you interrupted my journey because you insisted to see me i pray for somebody may you go past the pastor may you go past the church elders may you go past the choir may nothing be able to offend you may you come to the place in god where you see him so that certain protocols can be brought to a halt because of you Jesus. Jesus. say don't touch me if you touch me you have you have thwarted the entire work of redemption you have defiled it from Gethsemane to now mortality is not needed don't bring mortality where immortals are operating he said go and tell them you saw me one went say i saw the napkin another came i saw the angel mary say i saw him i saw him i prophesy to somebody may god give you a revelation of who jesus is may you see him in the light of who he is take your seat all this malice is because you never saw him all this i didn't greet me you have never met him all this arrogance dressing and look like you are the only one in this world you have not met him the day you meet him you'll be humble there are those who came to church they only saw angel they are running around some only saw the power of god mantle and handkerchiefs salt all kinds of mirror ah, god is here god is using our papa that's all they know there are others who say I, when i was worshiping i saw angel i saw goose people the heaven opened i saw vision hey but there are others who are not tired of who are not just satisfied at coming to church they want to meet him paul said that i may know him that i may know him and the power of his resurrection have you written one third of the new testament have you gone to the third heaven and mysteries were excavated to him have you encountered several visions the cry of paul is that i might know him no when i say i press 
towards the price for the mark of the high calling of God for getting about the things that are behind I look forward I prophesy to somebody may fresh hunger fresh desire fresh fire to serve God and to live for the kingdom of God come upon you in the name of Jesus Amen. I need thee oh I need thee every hour I need thee take me Lord to your secret place Lord take me by the hands to your holy let me see your face I your glory Lord let me know you more let me know you more that I am known you Lord take me Lord take me Lord to your secret place Lord take me by the hand to your holy let me see your face. I know glory, Lord. Let me know you more. That I am Lord. Take your seat. These are people who will not take no for an answer until they see him. They press into relationship with him until they saw him. Others saw napkin. Others saw angel. But one woman saw him. He reversed the entire program and procession of heaven. Brought it to a halt. Give one hour lateness. Because a woman wants to see him at all costs. I know I laid him here. Where did you keep him? He's risen. Let me see him. How can a man be risen? I cannot see him. Let me see him. I want to see him. The question is, we all come here with different desires. Some come with desire that has nothing to write home about. Others come with little pressure of desire. But there are those whose desire is colossal. Very massive and Gibraltar. Their hunger for God is unseatable. And if you are among those, I came to announce to you, before the next seven days, your eyes will be open to the reality of heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, words of Jesus. Let's run very fast. Today is not a day of everlasting message. It's a day to just enjoy God. Matthew 27 verse 46. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why will he say that? That is abandonment. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I thought Paul would stop there. He said that I may share in the fellowship of his suffering. What is the fellowship of his suffering? That's the question. There are two types of sufferings. There's a suffering that comes as a result of rebellion. But there is also the suffering that comes as a result of pastoral instructions, scriptural instructions, prophetic obedience. There is a suffering that comes from scriptural obedience, pastoral obedience. God could just tell you, raise a sacrifice and it's not convenient. The prophet tells you, give this kind of seed, raise it. It's not convenient. You are looking for 10,000 and God is demanding for 100,000. That is pastoral obedience, prophetic instructions. You are in church worshiping God. God tells you, change the whole plastic chairs in this church. That is prophetic instructions that you receive. And you can be hearing the word of God as I'm preaching in the area of sacrifice. God tells you, clothe the choir. That is scriptural sacrifice. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3, he said, endure hardness as a soldier of Christ. There is this hardness you need as a soldier of Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. There is this hardness you need as a soldier of Christ. Because uh, if you don't endure hardness, you will suffer hardship. There's a difference between the hardship and hardness. Hardness is where God passes you through trainings and through battles. The suffering of fellowship. 
Paul said that I may share in the suffering of, and have fellowship in the in a suffering of his fellowship. What is the suffering of his fellowship? The Bible said, and they continue daily in the apostle doctrines, moving from house to house, breaking bread. That is what I call the suffering of his fellowship. When you have to trek for God, when you have to sacrifice your lunch to, for fasting, when you have to sacrifice your time to be in church, when you have to sacrifice business deals, anybody that cannot sacrifice for the gospel is not worth being a child of God. I ask you a question today. Since you became born again, what can you say you have sacrificed for the sake of God? I remember I've been in mountains several times. Rain will beat me from morning till evening. And most times God tells me to go to mountain in July. And those July is everyday rain in Jaws. I remain there every day, almost 30 days underwater. That is the fellowship of his uh, uh, the suffering of uh, the fellowship of his suffering. Suffering that comes by fasting and prayer. The suffering that comes by sacrifice. That is why Romans 8 and 18 say, I, 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 I recommend that the suffering of these present times shall not be compared. I reckon that the suffering of this present time shall not be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I don't know why God allows the suffering before the glory. He said, when you have suffered for a while, then you, he shall establish you and he shall settle you according to Peter. Am I talking to somebody here? Don't look at it awkward. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse kinds of temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patient. We have spoiled the Christians of nowadays. We tell them if you serve God, your 10 meat in the pot will become 59. When you serve God, your 2 meat will become 113. We still tell them any man that lives father and mother shall be rewarded in this world. But we forget to add plus persecution, plus temptation, plus trials. We said that only those who shut the mouth of lions had faith. The Bible said women brought their dead back to life. The Bible said they had faith. The Bible said they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They turned to fly the armies of the elements. They were violent in fight. And out of weakness we are made strong. We thought that they have faith. But my Bible also said some were naked. Some were hungry. And that is also faith. The Bible said their demonstration of faith was that even in hunger they persisted. Even in nakedness they persisted even in lack no wonder paul said what shall separate us from the love that is in christ jesus is it hunger is it nakedness is it a lack of car is it a lack of husband is it a lack of children he said he in all of this we have come too far to backslide he said to peter lovest thou me more than this because hear me when you encounter him there are things you will lose for the sake of him there are things you will sacrifice for the sake of him many times in my hotel room i get lonely after i finish preaching people use me finish great man i come back body battered and shattered looking frustrated i look up to him and say lord it's because of you i have to go all through this am i talking to somebody here the fellowship of his suffering it goes with some loneliness goes with some pains oh my god i pray for you i pray for you jesus said to them yeah when the mother came he said put one on your right hand and your left hand hear what jesus said can you drink of the cup can you drink of the cup can we have too many sandwich christian vegetable Today, if gunmen enter here and say, take a shot for Jesus, I don't know how many people will remain in this church. Pa, pa, pa. If you are not, if you are a child of God, you are going to die now. People will create windows where there is no windows. <laughs> Emergency windows will be created everywhere. That is when you will know that this is a temporary building. There will be outlets everywhere. They just come to pra. Hey. I'm a Boko Haram. So, Who wants to die for Jesus? You will see. Who use head to break the wall? They will use head. Ah, their head will become hammer head of horror. 
<laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Vegetable hearted Christians can't stand persecution, can't stand little trials, persecuting your job, and you pray, and the prayer seems not to come in speed. You're already discouraged. Why you not in church? I don't know whether God still answer. That's the reason why people change church, 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 church. God is not after the church you change. He's after working on you. Because when he has tested you, you will come forth as gold. There is abandonment in serving him. That is why he cried on the cross. My father, my father. Why? Had thou forsaken me. That scripture was not Jesus that composed it. It was David that composed it. In Psalm 22 verse 1. When he suffered persecution. A whole king of Israel. Everybody envied David. But here was David crying. My God, my God. Why has thou forsaken me? Why has thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. There was a time in David's life. I know you say he's the king of Israel. I know you said David praises God seven times a day. I know you said David prays three times a day. I know you said David is a man after God's own heart. But there was a walk, a time in his life. He asked this question. Uh, my father, my father, why has thou forsaken me? Whether you like it or not as a child of God, you must come to that point. Because that is when our faith is being tested. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. That is when our faith is being tested. Abandonment must come. Every man will experience abandonment in his journey with God. The problem with the storm of life, many times they make you cry. No matter who you are. I love one song, Oprah, that came many years ago. Titled, The Rich Also Cry. The rich cry. Buhari cries. Jonathan cries. He cries. The, the uh, Jonathan chief of staff, the one that tormented many people, had that attack. He just died on Thursday. He died. Died in National Hospital. Why did he die of heart, heart, heart attack? As they collected every money, everything from him. Living in one room in Lagos. Because of shame. Took everything. And many people that he blocked the way, including presidents, could they have access to the president? The seed we sow because of digestion and rejection slip into eternity once a pastor. What has happened? As we sow seeds, we should be careful because we will reap them. But I know he will go to heaven because he has made it right with God. But just that his journey on earth was cut short. People cry. The rich cry. I also cry. Members can show you shaggy. They can torment you as a pastor. One pastor was crying to me in Portacot yesterday. I said to him, clear your tears. We all cry. Bishop Oyedebo cries. Papa Ayo cries. We all cry. Papa Deboye cries. We all cry. A time where we ask God, where are you? Have you ever asked a question, why does the righteous suffer? Have you asked a question, why is heaven silent to me? Have you asked God, why is God being wicked to me like this? Why? Why am I suffering and he will not hear me? One day I told God, if I am you and you are me, I would have answered you since day day. That was it. I told him, I said, God, if you be me and I be you, me for don't answer you since. Why did they watch me like that? And I could hear him say, now nah, Corel. We ask questions, we go through all kinds of things in life. But I discovered that the purpose of abandonment is very unique before God. Abandonment.
adamant many times makes us better and not bitter. Please don't feel bitter because God is working in you a weight of glory. Abandonment is to break up the chain of limitation. Most times your friends need to go so that God can change your level. Sometimes somebody needs to walk out on you so that God can lift you. Pastor, some members need to leave your church so that God can bring the right people. As long as they are in that church, gossip will not cease. As long as they are not church, they will be pulling down your work. They have to leave so that people who fear God can come. Because if they come and meet this kind of people, your work will continue to be a bad. Number three is to redefine you. That is why you go through pressure. You go through abandonment. God wants to redefine you. He wants to rework you. Proverbs 24, 25 verse 4. I like what Proverbs 25 verse 4 said. That when he has passed me through the fire, I shall comfort as gold. Take away the dross from silver and there shall comfort a vessel for the finer. Take away dross. So anytime we go through abandonment and the fire of temptation and persecution, God is taking away the dross so that we can come out fine as gold and silver. Don't complain when you go through trials. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience. This is the kind of gospel we don't want to hear. And that is a bedrock of Christianity. And Jesus declared them in these last seven words that are so important. Whoever you are, you will face challenge as a child of God. For Abraham, it was childlessness. For Jacob, it was Laban he confronted for 20 years. For Joseph, it was his brothers and Mrs. Potiphar. For some sin, it was Philistines and Delilah. Philistines pursued him until they, they overtook him and swallowed him. If it was Joshua, then it is Jericho fighting him. If you are Mordecai, Haman will come for you. If you are Isaac, you will be confronted with the reopening of the well because your enemies will always want to close the well despite your prayers. If you are Daniel, the lion's den is waiting for you. Because that's the only way your testimony can break forth. If you are David, Goliath is waiting for you. That's the only way what you carry can be revealed to your generation. If you are the three Hebrew boy, we get ready for the flames of fire. That's the only time the Son of Man will show forth in the midst of the fire. Without this suffering, sir, you will know the strength of God. His strength is made perfect. I saw the Lord Christ take away this thing, take away this thing, and I hear him say, My grace is sufficient for you. You will go through abandonment, sir. The number fifth one, let's run quickly. John 19 and verse 28. He said to them, I thirst. I thirst. They brought vinegar to give him. I thirst. Hmm. And this Jesus knowing that all things, John 19 and verse 28. Knowing that all things um, all things, oh, knowing that now all things were now accomplished, that the scripture may be fulfilled. Jesus said, I passed. Task means distress. I passed. I am fainting. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. He said, We traveled as we journeyed. There was no peace, no rest. We were distressed on every side. When we came on to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. We were troubled on every side. Without, we are fighting. Within, we are fierce. Paul, you talking this? The man who said in 1 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of sound mind. Paul that said, we have not received the fear, the spirit of fear again unto bondage. But we have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba Father. How can the same Paul said, within is fear. Hallelujah. Without is fighting. Within is fear. How can Paul be afraid? How can the son of man who say, he that is thirsty, let him come to me. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. How come I heard him said, I thirst. I thirst. I thirst. Jesus, you thirst. You invited me to quench my thirst. Now you are thirsting. 
Jesus, I thirst. Paul said we had fear. I fear, brother, there are times when you are afraid of your future. There are times when you are afraid of what life holds for you. There are times you actually say whether this is the same man I married. This is the same woman I married. When I went into this marriage, I had hopes. My hope have crashed. Jesus tasked. Only God knows what is the hunger of your soul. What are you longing for? What do you want? Paul said, fear within, fighting outside. But verse 6, he said, nevertheless, God who comforted those who are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. I'm reading 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 6. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. Are you thirsting? Your Titus is coming. Your help is coming. Your deliverance is coming. God will leave you in that condition. You won't die in that condition. He said, I thirst. They brought vinegar, sour vinegar, full of alcohol. When they put it in his mouth, he will not take it. He died with thirst so that you thirst no more. I prophesy to somebody, you will thirst no more. Many people say they want to be like Apostle Paul. Do you know what that man went through? Do you know what the fellowship of his suffering means to him? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 21. 2 Corinthians 11, 21. Do you know what that means to him? He said, I speak concerning reproach as though we had been weak. Happy whosoever is bold. I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Then look at verse 23. Verse 23. 23. He said, Are they ministers of Christ? Speak as I fool. I am more in labor, more abundantly. In stripes, above measure. In prison, more frequent in death. In death, continue verse 24. In death of the Jews, five times receive I. Forty stripes, save one. I received 39 kobokos. Five times. Three times was I beaten with the rods. Once was I stoned. They stoned me. I died. Brethren surround me. I wake up. Thrice I suffer shipwreck. Plane crash if it is today. He suffered plane crash three times. Shipwreck. A night and a day I was in the belly of the deep. Inside sea. One of the accidents kept me inside sea. For one day, one night. I was recovered from the belly of the earth. In journeying more often like Talena. Too much traveling. In peril of water. That there was no air. He could have put peril of air. In peril of robbers. In peril of my own countrymen. I'll never forget one of those nights. I was moving. We are moving from uh, Onicha by 2 a.m. to go to Uyo to continue preaching. I said to them, We must move that night. And we began to move. See armed robbers gather everywhere. They are beating people. We are hearing cry. When we came close, the guy said, oh, God, I'm robbers. And when you go back, they may open fire because we are close. It was in a corner. I told the driver, drive right ahead. Headlong. Drive into them now. I positioned myself in tongues. When we got close, our exhaust shoot three gone. Po! 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 They took off. automatic shooting the car began to jerk we move forward po, po, po. we move forward i said don't stop let the team be rolling the engine went over i said let it be rolling one kilometer the car stopped i said check fast and let's get out they all came out of the bush they said oh boy how are they we say we did fine which can go when are they use I'm Robert who doesn't want to die. (laughs) 
Number six, John 19, 30. The six words of Jesus. He's, he declared, it is finished. I call that celebration of the defeat of the devil. I will come back to that. Number seven, Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Father, into your hand, I commit my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. He gave up the ghost. From the time of arrest to the time of crucifixion, Jesus met seven people that were never born again. From the time of his arrest to the time of the cross, he encountered seven people that were never born again. How can you meet him and still remain a sinner? I said that in my periscope last night. How many of you watched periscope last night? I will just run through their names. He met Kephas, the high priest, who gave him dirty slap. He said not a word. Kephas met the savior that is able to save him. He remained a sinner. Kephas sent him to Herod. Herod said, wow. Herod is a, is a Christian that likes benefits. Kephas is a religious Christian. Uh, Herod is that one that wants to serve with benefits. The Christian that wants, what must I get to be saved? Not what I do to be saved. He doesn't want to do anything. He wants to get. The Bible says Herod was expecting bribe from Jesus so that he can set him free. When he saw no bribe, he handed him over to Cephas. Cephas took him to Pilate. Number three, he met Pilate. Bible said Pilate, willing to set him free. But the wives sent a message and said, I have suffered many things about him in the dream this afternoon. He's an innocent man. Yet, Pilate will not set him free for the fear of the Jews. There are many of you who can't serve God because you fear your husband. You fear your wife. You fear your children. You fear what people will say about you. You are serving God with carefulness because you don't want to be criticized. Sir, and there are people who don't want to be born again. I know of a lady who refused to be born again. She was crying in my service. I asked people to, uh, on a white Sunday, people came to give their life to Christ. And I walked to the lady. I said, will you want to give your life to Christ? She did me like this. Yes, she was crying. So, I asked the mother on phone, why is your daughter crying? The daughter that visited you. She said she doesn't know. She will ask her, daughter, why were you crying in church? Papa was preaching and yet you won't come out. He said, she wants to be saved but for her boyfriend. She doesn't know what her boyfriend will say. So, on Tuesday, she was on Sunday. On Tuesday, she left her mother traveling to go back to her station. She had an accident and died on the spot. The day I was laying her on the ground to bury her, her boyfriend gave his life to Christ on her graveyard. The man she doesn't want to give her life to Christ for is now born again on top of her grave and she's on the way to hell fire. Nobody is worth your salvation. Nothing is very important to you. Pilate here. He knew he was the son of God. But he could not. The next person he encountered was the Roman soldier. They remove his garment. They remove his garment. These are people that come for what they can get. They come for miracles. They know his garment is powerful. So they took his garment. But they, don't, they, they need the miracle. But they don't want the miracle worker. They want the healing. But they don't want the healer. Many politicians come to church during election. After we pray for them, finish. They get power. They forget. I told one senator, I said, you will come back again, 9 to 19. When you come, I will cut your two legs. I off my phone. When you come back again, I will cut your two legs. I said, I left the other man and prayed for you and I command the man to be overthrown. He was overthrown. Now you have entered, you have done worse than him. You have never entered this church to say, thank you, Jesus. Yet you pursue me like he goats when you are looking for things. There are people who come to seek miracles. You pray for them, give them instruction, be in the church on Sunday. No! Pastor, I'm busy. I, my, I am busy in my church. If your church can deliver you from your problem, why do you come to me? I ask you be in the service, you are telling me you are a Sunday school director. Go there and be directing your Sunday school. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. I am tired of people using me. I don't like counseling anymore. 
I don't like it. I've cancelled for 30 years. It's enough. The one Tajan cannot cancel you and Pastor Dan Mama. Then wait, I will cancel you from altar. Doing the same thing for 30 years. If I am a lecturer for 30 years, I should be a professor emeritus. If I'm in the army for 30 years, I should be a two-star general. Or maybe planning for retirement. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. So don't come and make me look like I'm one small boy that is learning to do job. Don't be a pilot. Don't be like the Roman soldier. Who is the Roman soldiers. The next person he met was the centurion, the major. The Bible says he died, he died. Until the centurion said, of a truth, he is the son of God. He saw the reality, yet he didn't give his heart. He saw the reality, he didn't give his heart. The last person was the thief at his left hand. He met him on the path to cross to the other side. Yet he could not take advantage. But his friend took advantage. My God, my father, remember me in your kingdom. And he said, today you will spend eternity. The other one on the left leg was still looking like a zombie. Yet they just asked your friend that is coming to eternity. Would you say, Lord, anything I've said, forgive me. Can I also join in eternity? Don't you think that guy would have been saved? But on that cross, two destinations. One went to hell and one went to heaven. Because they may, may you not meet Jesus today in the day of resurrection and still go back with your own sin and with your own shortcomings and with your own limitation. May you meet him and know him. Amen. These are the old rugged messages we preach. These are the things that make us strong in the 80s. In the 70s, those who gave their life. That's what make you strong. Not this sandwich 2000 believers and 1990s. They can't stand any pressure. They put face like early money toilet because of delay. We whether I answer us or not. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. I love this. If no one join me, still I will follow. If my friends refuse to join me, still I will follow. If no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. I pray for somebody that your Christianity and your love for God may be founded on the truth of what Christianity is all about. Christianity is not butter and bread. Christianity is demonstration of the power of Calvary where Jesus met the demand of justice. Child of God. The awkward thing that can happen to any human being happened to the master. He was slapped by his creatures. He was spied upon by his creature. He was undressed naked with only pint. Was led 30 kilometers to Golgotha, bearing his own cross, falling and rising. They were beating him. The Romans whip is so long that it's about 10 feet long. At the end, the last three feet, they will tie bottles, broken bottles, and knives, and razors, and, and nails, sharp nails, piercing. Then they will throw the thing, and it will go around his body. All the knives, all the nails, all the bottles will stuck to his flesh. They will pull it. His flesh will tear. Have you watched the mark of the cross? He shouted. They broke his capillary. Broke his vein. They tore him. The Bible says he was mirrored. There was no comeliness with him. When you see him, you will not recognize him. They, they transformed him for bad. They broke him. They broke him. He fainted carrying the cross until Simon the Siren appeared and helped him to carry the cross. And when they got to the place called Golgotha, 
they drove nine inches nail on his leg penetrate his bones and hit him back to the legs and then hit it to the wall to the wood and they nail him on the hands and then they put the crown of tongues of tissues they broke it call it chuku chuku they the, the each of the tongues uh, is about three feet uh, three inch uh, he penetrate down to his core the press it uh, and the nails and the and the and the tongues all enter the score to gain balance on his head it was a crown of tongues he cried i passed i passed i passed i passed the bible says and the whole creature repair and say why do you crucify the king of glory the sun refused to shine he died he died he died until the sun refused to shine he died he died he died he died until the earth began to quaker he died he died he died he died he died until the graves were open and the dead were raised and the dead little jerusalem he died he died he died he died he died until they brought water and said drink and he refused he died he died he died he died he died he died until the centurion said of a truth he is the son of god and he said my father into your heart i commit my soul and he gave up the cross. He gave up the cross. All the way to Calvary. He went for me. He went for me. He went for me. All the way to Calvary. He went for me. He died to set me free. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he went for me, he died for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he died to say, How shall we neglect such a great salvation which was given to us? on the platform of mercy he took our place he died he yielded the ghost he said my father why 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 have you forsaken me he died he died until the father turned his face against him until the father turned his back he could not stand his son he could not stand how he was mere humanity crucified the king of glory the king of glory the king of glory at the cross at the cross dear face met you and the body of my heart roll away it was the ever faith that I receive my sign and now I am hungry all the way so I cherish this good rugged cross take the wall and give me the cross to my cross at last I will cling to the wall Ba ba
Rani Randa da Gamfus Kan Yesu Lele Kutane I said the day I see his face, I will cry, Jesus. So this is you, Jesus. So at last I met you. The day I see your face, I will say, Jesus, it was a journey of years, denials and pains, sacrifice criticisms and attack but today I see your face Baz and Tafida and Nuovi Babo Koa Tare Dabini Wandana Gafuskanye On Friday, Joseph the Matia, a rich man, went to see Pilate to ask for his body. There are some dimension of command you can't have if you are poor. It was not prayer warrior that asked for his body. It was a rich man. But there's a place where we need rich people in church who need to talk to the rich also. The rich man spoke to the rich man. And the rich man released the body. He took him to a virgin womb. Nobody has ever been buried in that womb. He put him inside. And clothed him. And put decoration on the door. But the Pharisee, Sadducees, Cephas, the high priest, went to see Pilate. Sir! When this deceiver was alive, we had him said three days. After three days, he's going to resurrect. Sir, if we allow this thing to happen, the deception of now will be worse than the one that made us kill him. Give us soldiers so that we can make his sapruka sure. The Bible said the soldiers appear, 54 soldiers. Roman soldiers, six footed and seven footed soldiers. Before you join the Roman army, they must put scorpion in your pocket. When scorpion bites you, you remain at attention for 30 minutes. Then you can join the Roman soldier. If you can't stand scorpion, you will not join. That is the kind of people, hardened guys. 54 of them were deployed. They carry a massive stone and they close the tomb. They remove the door, put a stone. They say, even if he rise, the stone won't allow him to come out. And if he manage to remove the stone, we are here to kill him the second time. We will kill him. And they all stood ready. All hell began to rejoice that the Son of God has been crucified. And now he is dead. The uh, devil recalled back all his agents to come for a three days party. Spirit of fornication, adultery, principality, powers, ruler, darkness, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, us lying spirit, all of them left the wall and went to hell for party. And uh, principality said, Ladies and gentlemen, this party is called to order. The theme of this party is the celebration of the defeat of the Son of God. We want to salute our president general, Satan himself, for a work well done. And all of you, we are here to, is on the third day. We are going to give you promotion uh, rankings and lift you forever dealing with that useless man who call himself the Son of God. Therefore, we are going to party till daybreak. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome the generals, principality, power, ruler, darkness into the dance floor, spirit of fornication and adultery. They began to dance. Tick, 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 tick. That's the way we do it. Tick, 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 tick,
and hell was on rumb rumbling dancing the son of god was lying cold in the hands of death friday went through saturday went through sunday early morning like my custom was like i used to say the first day satan told mr death and mr grave you will not join us in this party make sure you keep him under your care because i heard he said three days so don't joke with him keep him there you will not be doing party with us be there death he says sir keep him grave he says sir keep him he said we are in charge continue the party they want sit and carry the phone hey mr death is that guy still under your control he said oh god who has escaped me before the guy is under my control if not for that useless elijah and enoch whom our god Bata Bata took him himself this one is under my control he said be careful because i hear three days saturday he picked the phone mr death is the guy under your control he said oh god why are you the worry i said the guy is under my control on the third day early in the morning sunday morning around 4 a.m going to 5 a.m the phone mr dead is this guy under your control he said oh god what is your problem enjoy the party is it not the three days now we're already in the three days the guy is under my control okay i say relax he can't escape i have made him dead times three he can't escape me he can't escape grave he can't escape stone he can't escape the soldier so okay relax okay don't he said be careful because i hear three he said okay what are you saying just know that i am a wait <laughs> president general wait his hand is moving wait his legs is shaking wait his body is vibrating wait he is over the heavens he's alive again though the storm be roll away he's alive again he's no longer where he lay he's alive again i can hear the angels sing let the whole world rejoice he's alive he's alive he's alive he's alive again storm be roll away Immediately he rose. Immediately 
morning he rose he flexed his muscles the first enemy he handled was mr death he crushed death oh death where is thy victory oh grave where is thy power am i talking to somebody here yes sir Crush the death and then walk into the party as he was advancing. Satan said, Close the gates, close it, it's coming. The brightness, like the Muslim man said, he called himself light. light. The brightness of his light Jesus. went ahead of him. And Satan said, Close the gates. And a voice said, Lift up your head. Oh, you dead and you everlasting dogs be you lifted up that the king of glory may come in who is the king of glory the lord mighty in battle the lord strong in battle the god that is not afraid to fight is the one telling you lift up your heads when you approach the fire of his presence scattered the gates he went straight to mr devil give me the key he said mm, what key the key of dead and life put it in my hands said so i said mm, i will give you before the devil will know the key was in his hands when he grabbed the key he said all power in heavens and on earth and under the earth has been given unto me the devil gave him slap gave him slap lifted him 6 a.m. in the morning say anywhere you hear my name you must do what ah! we are for God has highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every God when he released the devil he went straight on his knee he grabbed principality he crushed him grabbed power crushed him grabbed ruler darkness he spoiled principalities hold it let me run let me run the word he spoiled american translation said he made a caricature of the devil he made a caricature what does it mean to spoil? He carried the nose and put on the back. Carry the hand, put it in the anus. Carry the private part, put it on the head. Carry the eyes, put it on the back. He made a caricature. Car uh, 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 Amplified said he destroyed wagons of demons. Put them in a wagon, shake them, fling them. And then, then all saints in the Bible, we are all in hell. There are three types of hell. There is Shoel, there is Guyana, and there is Hades. I will talk about that next time. But then the soul of the departed righteous are in Shoel. The soul of the departed sinners are in Hades. And the soul of angels and spirits are in Guyana. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? So her, Shoel, which is paradise, used to be in hell. Where Satan locked all the Old Testament saints to John the Baptist. Even the thief at the right hand was already there. When Jesus approached to that gate, he broke the gates and made them having testimony night. They were celebrating about the Son of God. Everybody talked about how you knew him. Well, David said, I knew him. Others said, I knew him. He appeared. He called them Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joseph, David. Come out. Shedra, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, all of you. All the righteous saints come out john the baptist come out all of them came out jesus so this is you we are privileged to see your glorified body he said we are on our way to heaven i am relocating paradise from here to heaven you are all following me and he said it's time to sing a victory song somebody should lead us in a song as we dance our way to heaven and then Moses said, let me be in front. 
because I led the children of Israel in the wilderness. I can lead. Uh, Abraham said, no, let me be in front. I'm the father of faith. I can lead everyone. Small David came to the front and said, allow me to lead. I'm a choir master. I know how to sing. Jesus said, allow David to lead us in song. David lifted up his voice. Oh, that man, we praise the Lord. Oh, that man, we praise the Lord. Take your seat. Take your seat for a moment. David began to lead and they were on their way to heaven. And the Bible said they all took permission. When Mary was crying by the tomb, Jesus excused himself to go and appear and talk to her. Well, the Old Testament sent, the Bible said the dead littered Jerusalem. All the Old Testament sent, all went to greet their grandchildren. Bible said dead people entered Jerusalem and were greeting their children. They said we are glad oh, we are on our way to heaven. Jesus has rescued us. Make sure you serve that Jesus. Oh. We are on our way to heaven. The Bible says, dead people littered Jerusalem. They were greeting their loved ones. Is somebody hearing me? They were greeting their loved ones on the way to heaven. The moment they approached heaven, I saw God stood at attention. All the angels with trumpets. Are you following what I'm saying? And I heard God said, Thy throne, O God, is forever. The scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore the Lord thy God has anointed you above your fellow. Come, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your food. Jesus knelt down before the father he said father I present to you the blood of the covenant the blood of the new testament the blood of everlasting redemption no more shall the blood of bullocks and say my father here is the blood and the father said take the blood wash the utensils of worship Jesus wash the utensils of worship no longer is the blood of bullocks and goat accepted accept the blood of jesus therefore let us come to his throne boldly that we may obtain grace and find help in times of need immediately he watched the utensils of worship he went to sit down when he sat down two minutes he stood up he said my father give me 50 days my disciples are in disarray i never share grace most of them denied me let me go and put them in order i shall be back to sit on my throne and the father say you are permitted in a room where there was no window no door the bible say he appeared and said to them peace be still the bible say but thomas will continue on wednesday stand up he's alive